Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today we're looking at a specific way that you can analyze your data and present it more visually, which is uh, extremely beneficial in the premises of customer behavior analysis. So the idea is that uh, we take our data, uh, let's say customers, their onboarding date, uh, how long they stayed, how long was their subscription before they canceled, and uh, we want to see how we can split them into groups and do some more detailed analysis. Uh, the idea is that if we just look at the whole data set, it's impossible to notice any trends. But if we split those into groups or cohorts, which comes from uh, the social studies, from uh, demographics mainly, if we split them in cohorts, uh, then uh, it's much easier to spot trends between the different groups. It's really useful for analyzing customer lifetime value, for uh, analyzing uh, retention rate, which is uh, what our example is gonna be. Yeah, by the way, if you're enjoying the videos, a like will be awesome and a sub will be amazing. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and dive straight in. You're running your business and you think it's probably pretty easy to track customer behavior especially if you have just John and Sarah as your customers. Then even with eight customers, it's still pretty easy to track them personally. How about 16? Still doable, right? But what happens if you have 128 active accounts? Well, you do it, but you're gonna need a lot of coffee. But then how about 512 accounts? Pretty certainly you're gonna get crazy doing that. Imagine the wasted time and money you're gonna spend. But wait, here's an idea for you. Why not grab some of those people that signed through social media, for example, and group them? And maybe then separate it in six groups. So social media, emails, affiliates, TV ads, walk-ins, Google ads. Gets pretty much easier to analyze it now, right? I have my customer data here and uh, it has some IDs, the customer, the subscription date, the cancel date, the plan and the monthly cost for the plan. You see at some places I don't have a cancel date and this means that the customer is still active. Let me just increase that a bit so it's easier for you to see. Now let's go ahead and first split our data into cohorts or groups. So what we want to do is we want to split them into months and years. So I want everyone that signed up during July 2017 to be in the same group. And uh, the reason for that is because I know that this company runs a promotion campaign every month to onboard new clients. And I just want to see, because different campaigns are run by different managers, I just want to see if the average time that a customer spends with us is in any way influenced by the manager that ran the campaign or by the campaign itself. So the way to do that, just going to create a new date and for a year, I'm going to grab the year of my subscription date. And for a month, I'm going to grab the month for my subscription date. Just gonna leave the day at the first of the month. That way, all the ones from July will have first of July. And go a bit further, right click, format cells, go to custom, and just remove, just remove the day. So now I only have the month here. So let's bring that down. And these are our cohorts. And something else that we want is we want to see how long everyone stayed and to do that I'm gonna add a new column called months I'm gonna copy the formatting here this column is gonna check first if is number so I want to see if I have a cancel date and uh, this is a good way to check for dates because a date is pretty much a serial number 40,000 and something. So if this is true, if this is a date and it's not empty, then I want to round the month and I want the difference between those two dates, which is going to give me the number of days. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to divide that by 30 and round it to zero digits. It's not going to be perfect, but since we're rounding it anyway, it should pretty much match. 
and uh, in case this is not a number, if case that's false, I just want to say active. Note that this customer account is still active. Okay, 26 months. And let's see from July to August, we have 2017 to July 2019, it's gonna be 24. And then to August is gonna be 25. And here it's rounded at 26 because you see that here we're at the beginning of the month, here at the end, but it doesn't matter that much. Let's bring that down. And here where we have no cancel date, we get active. There are a lot of ways to, to do that in Excel, but I think this is probably the easier way for me to wrap my head around it, figure out how to do it. I'm just gonna grab the whole table with Control and Shift and the arrow keys. And I'm gonna hit Alt and V for pivot table. Let's create a pivot table. Let's rename the sheet and make it a bit bigger. So what we want here is we want the months to accumulate here on the columns as we want to illustrate to where each cohort came. Then we want the cohort here Okay, and you can see as long as I drop the cohort here, it split it and grouped it in years and quarters, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna right click, group, and I'm gonna remove the quarters. Okay, now I have the year and the month, and I'm gonna go to design, report layout, show in tabular form. I'm also gonna remove the subtotals and I'm gonna repeat all item labels. So now I have the year, the month, the year, the month, the year, the month. For our values, what we want to have is we want a count of our customer. Okay, so what does this show us? This shows us that in August, in this cohort, so someone that was in this cohort or signed in August 2017, at three months, we have one of those clients that had three months life cycle. So at the third month was their cancellation date. So that's where they canceled. So this is pretty much one customer lost at the third month, one lost at the fifth month and so on. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another sheet and I'm gonna call it retention rate. Just want to apply some formatting, retention rate, apply style. Okay, now let me just enlarge it a bit so it's easier for you to see. I'm just gonna go ahead on our pivot, grab this whole table without the totals, copy it and paste it as values. Another thing I want to do is, I don't like how those are displayed here and different columns. I'm just gonna combine them. I think it would look best if I have this and, and this and this. So this is the short way to concatenate. So what I'm concatenating is the year, then empty space, colon, empty space and the month. So I get 2017 June. Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste those as values. And uh, what we can do now is we can grab this whole thing and just place it on top here. So I have the cohort and uh, I'm also gonna be moving those. I'm gonna cut them, place them here and I'm gonna grab the grand total and put it at the front. And this is gonna be my subscribe. So those are the people that subscribed in this period because those are all the customers that had their subscription date within this cohort. And those are the people we lost, the customers we lost at each next month. So I'm gonna grab the whole thing, shift and space to select the whole row. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna insert it at the top. And what I wanna do here is, let me first just make that a bit more legible like that, some nice blue. Okay, I'm just gonna copy that here. And here I wanna have the net customers that remain. This will be equal to this minus 
this corresponding here, 15. If we bring it to the side with Control R, then we should have 14, then it should be the same, 14, and then 13 here and so on. I'm gonna go to the end and then I'm gonna select the whole thing and use Control D to copy down. As you can see, this is not true. They're active here. I pretty much don't need those, so I'm just gonna delete them. Uh, it's not true because it's getting the balance here and uh, those are movements of clients and this is all that are left. So I'm just gonna remove this column since we don't need it. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this whole thing once more at the top. Then I would like those to be grouped so I can hide them when I'm not using them. Okay, let's make this look just a bit better. I'm gonna use my favorite dark blue. Okay, I'm gonna rename this to three months. I'm actually gonna make it equal to this down here and months, so I don't have to write it all those times. And then add a space here. Okay, four months, three months. Now we have it here. This is gonna be my lifetime. And now we're just going to use this data here to calculate the retention rate. So from those customers that signed up in June 2017, I wanna see how many in percentage terms are left after three months. So what I can do is this equals to this 15. And remember, this is the balance that we have left. So here we have how many left at each period. Here we have the balance that remains. And here we're gonna see how much is this balance out of the starting point, out of those 18. So I'm gonna divide this over 18. And for 18, I want to fix the column. So when we copy this to the side, this D37 is gonna be changed respectively because the format matches, the structure matches. But I want this to remain in column C and just move down on the rows. Format this as a percentage. Control Shift to the right, Control R to copy it over. And we can see that at the end we're left with just 11% of the customers that we signed in June 2017. Now that we have selected this, we can grab the whole table, Control D to copy down and we have our data. And it's already much easier to analyze, but uh, what would actually be best is if we can visualize it with some colors. Actually, I'm gonna change something uh, because here we're using this thing and I want this to say 100%. So we're actually gonna do it a bit differently. So this here is gonna be equal to the corresponding cell from the below table divided on the subscribed, the total from the bottom table again with a fixed column. So this will now be 100%. And if I copy it down with Control D, everything should be 100%. And now if I copy that with Control R to the side, we get everything here. And it's really easy to make it more colorful using a heat map. So it's, it's really easy to see where any inconsistencies might be. So if we just grab the whole thing, go to home, conditional formatting and I'm just gonna go to the color scales and I'm gonna pick this one because it says that it starts from green so 100 will be green just gonna click it and we have our color formatting and you can see that immediately it's really easy to notice that pretty much all campaigns do similarly the same but this thing here June 2018, something went really wrong because apart from June 2017, all other are at more than 90% retention after three months. But June 2018, in the first three months, we lost almost half of the newly subscribed customers. And this is a really easy way to illustrate our data because let's, uh, let's face it, even with those two additional columns, it's impossible to, to figure out what happened. We have like a thousand lines here. But once we do it like that, 
it immediately gives us this visual cue which helps us to focus our attention right here in June 2018. Okay guys, that was it for today. I first tried to do uh, that specific example when I was um, writing my uh, article on cohort analysis. And um, to be honest, I've never done it within Excel before. I've always used some different tools. So I really wanted to see if um, if it's possible to do it directly in Excel, which is the, 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 the tool of the trade for most of us anyway. I tried it and I found some difficulties uh, grasping it, so wrapping my head around how to approach it. And uh, that's why I wanted to share that uh, experience with you. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. I wanted to share this... <clears throat> I wanted to share this um, this um, riddle. So I, I wanted to to analyze this uh, data set of uh, people. Um, 